the hardest things when you say I'm going to do an album is what shall I write about? Um, I knew I didn't want to do just a collection of songs. I wanted to have it more thematic, rather like the Floyd used to do, actually. It was a very, very close friend of mine, and it was during I was making uh, The Division Bell, and she, she actually suffered uh, clinical depression. And so, being very close to her, I actually went to the hospital and learnt a lot about it. And it was, during this period, I was also wanting to do an album. I knew I was going to do an album as soon as the tour had finished. And uh, it just gave me a catalyst. Originally, I was going to do an instrumental. I thought, well, I'll try and express my feelings and the, th the things that happen when you're being depressed musically. The reason I had Anthony working on it because he did lyrics on Wearing Inside Out which in some ways are rather similar lyrics to it also it, it kind of expresses someone who's hiding in within himself and so he's very good at writing that kind of material. But originally the album was going to be largely instrumental but the um uh, the idea for, for the story, the concept of the album, which, um, which grew out of this idea that, that Rick had, um, I saw it as a possibility to make a very classic sort of structure of a kind of four-part uh, uh, or four-movement piece, if you like. And the first part is basically childhood, because invariably people who suffer depression, it's, it's some trauma that they've had during their life, and quite often it is during childhood, and it was in this person's case. Then we decided to do adolescence, and for me that was to try and express escape musically, like Satellite and songs like that. The third section is the depression, and the fourth section is actually dealing with the reason for depression and coming out of it. The idea of having a, a structure which you start with, which is, in a sense, the skeleton or mapping out the whole piece, is useful because what you can do is, you, if you're inspired by an idea that, that you know, pertains to one particular section, you can have this kind of uh, storyboard idea where, you, where you've got the whole thing mapped out. And it allows you to be uh, creative in a sort of non-sequential way. My studio here, is, it's a very simple studio. It's only really, it's not in the studio, it's like, I would call it a music room. We'd put up the board with four sections, and then we, whenever we had an idea, we'd write it down and stick it in the section. And we'd come and look at it. So that's the map of the album, basically, over there. A lot of it's disappeared now, because when we did things, we'd pull the paper off. The reason that I wanted an instrumental album was I didn't have much confidence in my voice as a singer. I'm not a singer. Um, I've never really liked the voice on what I've done on Pink Floyd, although I quite liked my singing on Wearing the Inside Out. So that gave me a bit of confidence. But I was... Then I decided I have to actually write some of this, put some lyrics into this music. Um, and at that time I was thinking of actually using another singer, a male singer. Um, but then we did Night of a Thousand Fairy Toys and I spent days actually in the studio. Normally I, I, get, I don't like singing because you're in a commercial studio, you have the producer and you have the other musicians behind the glass screen and I feel very uncomfortable and nervous. Whereas here I could do it all on my own. So I just, just messed around and I made up nonsense words. And tried all different ways of singing till I felt comfortable. So when that first song started, we said, well, we can't have an instrumental album, one song. So we then said, we'll have one song for each of the four sections. And then it actually became more, because then uh, Hidden Fear was, and Blue Room of Venice, which were going to be instrumental, I did the same process. I just sung to the music. I always wanted Sinead O'Connor. I mean, right from the beginning, when I knew... Because I'm, if you like, the narrator. I'm the one singing about my feelings towards depression and, and the whole story. 
but I wanted a girl to sing actually what was happening to her. And Sinead, it came to me immediately. I said I'd love Sinead to sing it because I love her voice and fascinating person. And I thought actually the subject matter would um, appeal to her actually. The same unbroken chain still remains. On uh, <clears throat> reaching for the rail, I didn't hear the way she sang it, I didn't hear it. But I think it's great what she did because she virtually whispered the whole song. Um, I heard it a lot harder singing, but she actually, it was very difficult to recall, but she was just whispering the lyrics. And uh, actually, I changed one bit because I actually sing the third verse. You took a look inside, how could you feel the way? I have a on and off been their sort of art director stroke sleeve designer for longer than I care to remember from Source of the Secrets and other than The Wall and The Final Cut I've done all their album covers In terms of um, working for Rick Wright on Broken China, um, he told me what he felt the album was about and how it had a cyclic nature and how it was in stages. And so we endeavoured to represent, as it were, what those stages were and also in its mood to represent the sound of most of the music that I heard at the time or the general feeling. So we designed it so that there were, as it were, four double page spreads in the booklet. Okay so that what happens is that after the first page of credits and introduction as it were you have four um, the four stages as on the album and the first stage is as I say related to early childhood and also we uh, we did this by using a background okay that seemed suitable so in the case of teenagers for instance it was uh, uh, literally an escape as if the teenager was running away so the background is blurred Upon this background that we thought was suitable was placed an object that would represent something about that stage in your life. So for a teenager, in this particular case it was a girl teenager, she was rather interested in how she looked. So she's looking in a compact mirror and she's as if we're checking her makeup. Same device is used for all the stages but everything being different. So the second one for instance shows a sort of spirally revolving thing. It's actually the spokes of a wheel of a bicycle to show a kind of um, whirlpool of anxiety and depression and possible madness okay and the little symbol icon object used in the corner is a broken twig as if as it were your mind had snapped this is the theory actually it's also done in order that the big background swashes that occur across the double pages are like the big sort of swashes in Rick's music Now the album's finished, when I listen to it, I, I really enjoy the shape of it. I think it's worked really well in terms of, of the overall shape. I think it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's a rich meal. I mean, it's not a light snack by any means. It takes some listening to, and, and I think like all good things, it takes a certain uh, input from the listener. I mean, in that sense, that it's... Uh, it's, it's perhaps not instant, but I think, it's, I think it's meaningful and I think it's sincere and I really like the way that Richard's voice, which wasn't planned to feature quite so much, uh, has worked. I think the danger of making a solo album is that you can get uh, very self-indulgent, which I hope this hasn't happened on this one. Because um, invariably, if you're in a band, all of us, Dave, Nick and me, we have frustrations. We want certain directions to go. And with the Floyd, obviously there are certain directions that maybe we took on some of the albums that I didn't like. And so the solo album is, in fact, a way to be able to express exactly what you want to say. And sometimes it doesn't work. I have to say I feel very good about this one, that I think I have actually said what I wanted to say, and I'm actually proud of it.